the Property Coaching and Wealth Creation Podcast. Brought to you by Property and Business Coach, Daniel Latto. Join the conversation at www.daniellatto.co.uk. Remember to like and subscribe. Hi, and welcome to the Property Coaching and Wealth Creation Podcast. My name is Dan Latto. And in this podcast, uh, we've got a Facebook Live. So I did a Facebook Live in the last couple of days. And... Of course, not everybody can watch the Facebook Lives, but the information in those Facebook Live events are really important. So I wanted to share them, and I wanted to get them down as a podcast. And so here is that Facebook Live. Speak soon. And good morning, everybody. It's Dan Latter once again. (laughs) This is the third time we're just going live, because the first two, we get a couple of minutes in, and then it will just end. So now I've got to do it all again. Uh, But we're going to talk today in podcast 205, the early signs of whether you're going to be successful or not. And one of the signs of whether you're going to be successful or not, morning Derek, is whether, where is it? I've got it written down, determination, (laughs) whether despite things not working, you're going to keep doing it. And even if if it fails another time, which we don't want to jinx it, touch wood, we're still going to go live again and go back to the start and we get this podcast recorded. I suppose if it does fail again, we could always go and just record a video and do it that way and pull out the MP3 that way. But uh, one of the factors in uh, whether you're going to be a success or not is the number of times that you're prepared to keep trying to do something when you fail or when it fails, sometimes through your own fault and sometimes through um, you know, the technology not working, for example, but we will keep on doing this until we get this podcast out because we it ruins everything in our future if we don't, right? So if we don't do this now, like, what, we're going to do it tomorrow? What happens to tomorrow's? Well, that goes on to the next day. What about the next? Excuse me, what about the next day? Well, that goes on to the next day. Well, that's no good. We're now a day behind on podcasts, so it's just not good enough. When we've done this in the past, you know, we should be up to, like, podcast five or 600 by now, but we haven't because we, we haven't been consistent. So, um I guarantee those times when we've not been consistent, my income's dropped, my level of success drops, and the times when I have been consistent, so let's write that one down as well, shall we? Consistency, really important. So determination, like um, when it fails, you keep going back to it. But also in this podcast, we're going to talk to you about like uh, my personal experience with clients, for example. Like We can tell almost immediately whether this client's going to have a level of success or not. Um, and also we're going to talk about tenants, um, and the level of success that that tenant will have as being a tenant. Because there's a couple of signposts with tenant. Like, just to clarify on this, there's some industries that we don't rent to anymore. Um, anybody who's in, a like, a legal-esque type profession, because they just come up to us and go, well, my boss said that I don't have to pay rent because such and such. That's like, okay, yeah, you bring your boss to, the, um, to court then and we'll give him a CCJ for you not paying your rent and then see if he's still saying that afterwards. So, uh, or, or there's another type of profession, one that manages the public. Uh, I'm not naming the profession, but one that manages the public. Uh, and uh, we've done this. And when you went to one of us and you fall out, uh, you have problems, shall we say. Um, not necessarily from that individual, but from their colleagues as well. Look, Ben Coppers, for crying out loud, let's just say it. <laughs> so we don't rent to them. Uh, I've got clients who are um, police officers, ex-police officers, and they're excellent, excellent clients. But as tenants, uh, they are, um, let's just say, to be uh, avoided, frankly. Uh, because then, oh, well, well, actually, mate, I think you'll find this. Oh, really? Well, we'll see in court then, will we? And it's just a nightmare, just a nightmare. So uh, with tenants, you've got to be careful who you rent to. But also, when you get a tenant actually in the property, there's a couple of signposts that will show you that this tenant's not going to be a good tenant. So I'll give you a couple of examples. We had a tenant move in, uh, two, maybe three weeks later, he's got a dog, 2 a.m. in the morning, running up and down uh, the stairs. He's in a multi-let, which is a house of multiple occupation. There's other people asleep. I'm pointing upstairs, it's not here. There's other people asleep upstairs, and the dog's running up and down. And it's like, what part of your brain thinks that that's acceptable exactly? And like, he was 25, so we didn't get a guarantor on this, this guy. Uh, Because anyone under 25, we used to get guarantors uh, because if he loses his job, he can't claim a housing benefit, right? So it puts us in a lot of trouble, puts all the risk on. So we stopped, we started taking um, referencing for anyone under 25. Now, uh, depending on what job they're in, it's going to be a guarantor for anyone under 30, believe it or not. We just gave a guarantor to a guy, uh, got a guarantor for a guy who's 36, uh, his very first flat, very young guy. Obviously, 36, but very young. Um, so 
you just got to be careful what you do on that. So, yeah, he had his dog running up and down the steps. The next one was uh, maybe a month later. He had uh, friends around, two o'clock in the morning, and a baby. And we're like, it's a, it's a house of multiple occupation. There's no couples allowed. There's no kids allowed. And there's nobody under 18 allowed, really. There, there's, there's nowhere in that kind of environment that's suitable for a baby. It's just not an envir- environment that's suitable, right? We can't rent to couples because it breaches our HMO license. Uh, we rent four people to a house. We put a fifth person in, and it's three or more stories. It takes us into HMO territory. We need a license and all that kind of stuff. So it pushes over. So we just don't do that. And then, um, the, uh, needless to say, two months later, he's late on his rent. Like we know it's coming, right? Because anyone who's an idiot, uh, or a, we we have a no dickhead clause on our tenancy. We, we don't call it that, uh, but. You know, basically, that's what it is. If you're a dickhead, you're out. We, just, we, we haven't got 46. I haven't got time for dealing with young people's problems. Do you know what I mean? Go home and sort them out. Don't put them into my house and then have other people dealing with them. Falling out with other tenants, being unreasonable with other tenants, uh, being dirty with other uh, other tenants, leaving all your pots and pans out there, uh, leaving your bike in the, um, in the main bit, leaving two bikes, like, how do you ride two bikes at the same time? Is one of them stolen? So often what we'll do is we'll remove the bikes. Um, like we, there is a store for the bike and that's downstairs. And yeah, it's a pain putting his bike downstairs. But that's not our problem, frankly. It's not in the hallway because if it's a fire, people can't get out. So we move, we remove the bikes and then we get a really exciting phone call. My bike's been stolen. No, we just moved it because you're in breach of your tenancy again. We're quite, we're quite tough on this just because, um, uh, I'll, I'll read you a message in a second, Derek. We're quite tough on this because last two hard. Do you know what I mean? So Derek's just saying nowadays some tenants threaten to slander your name using social media unless you came into their demands. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Derek. Uh, that can happen. Um, luckily, we own a social media company, a digital marketing company, and so anybody that does that, it's like fuck them. So what? Like we're going to overpower anything that goes out on social media. We've got some stuff on social media. Um, uh, that's negative about us. Um, when we did coaching, we asked someone to get a website for their business and, and it took them ages. So I'm like, crying out loud, let, let, we'll do your website for 200 quid. Just get your bloody website done. And then it goes on to one well, of the platforms. Oh, it's, it's telling me to get a website. I don't know why I needed a website. It's like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Always one side of the story. But you just got to be like, that's fine. We know it's going to happen. We've got to build that into our business. We know that tenants aren't going to pay their rent that's get built into our business i still get very upset when tenants don't pay we've got one right now uh should have paid it before december his dad passed away so he's flown back to i think mozambique i think it is to go with his family and he's like well I've, my dad died i didn't pay rent I'm like, okay did, did you buy an airline ticket to go home yeah did you pay them or did you just say well my dad's died i don't need to pay it no i paid them oh okay did you eat when you you know you go to mcdonald's yeah did you pay them or did you say my dad's died? I don't need to pay her. No, I paid them. Oh, I got it. So everyone's being paid but the landlord and that's acceptable. And you're upset with me because I've sent you a letter charging you 25 quid for non-payment because you've ignored my texts and messages. Yeah. Oh, OK. That's how it works. Still not paid. So he's got four days and we hit them with a section eight at 195 quid. And then we hit them with an M call in on in five days. Money claim online for all the rent, all the uh, section eight costs all added up, all interest, et cetera, et cetera. We just, we'll just deal with you in, in court. It's as simple as that. We're very black and white on this as landlords these days. And we've heard every excuse. My dad's died. I've got cancer. I've got my dog's died. Um, my son fell off a slide. I mean, like, we've had a guy who's had three grandmas pass away. Like, hang on, we've been counting them. What do you mean you've got a third one? What, what's going on? You know, it's just excuses. We get rid there is no excuse for not paying rent. It's like, there is, again, there is no universe that I know of where it's acceptable not to pay your rent. If you don't pay your mortgage and you tell the mortgage company, my family was wiped out on an airplane and I'm not paying you for that, that's okay. We'll just repossess your house. Like, they don't care. So one of the problems that I have is that I'm, I'm, I'm not um, disassociated enough from the tenant. So we're just changing that. So it's my name on a tenancy agreement. And so we're going to put in a, a buffer, like a lettings agency. So it's the lettings agency. Derek, this is for you specifically. So there's a lettings agency that's actually been the nasty people telling them that you need to pay your rent. So then all they do is go slander the letting agency. No one gives a damn then. 
So you can you can put a little buffer in place, and that's exactly what we're doing right now as we speak. So we've got people on that. So that's it with tenants. Uh, of the other one with tenants is that they have constant major events, major drama going on, like major, 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 right? Like I'm a dad now and I've got a 13 year old and I'm uh, I'm separated, divorced, but not married. So separated from my ex-partner from like 10 years ago. And unfortunately, she's somebody who loves drama, has to have drama. Everything's drama. And unfortunately, that's reflecting on the 13 year old. and It will reflect on the 10 year old. Social services just deal with the 13-year-old, not the mum. And it's like, guys, that's not the problem. The older one is the problem. Sort that out and everything else gets sorted. Obviously, the dirt because the social services thick as shit, negligent, incompetent, uneducated. I'm sorry if you work in social services. <laughs> that's my experience of lead social services. We should write a book and name these motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and if you watch your social services, yeah. So, um, that uh, walls have ears. So, uh, like, people who have major drama in life will always have major drama. There's always something major going on, right? And it's like, I haven't got time for this stuff. Just, okay, here's your eviction notice. Go give it to someone else. We, we had a tenant who wanted to move in, and they were just weird. So this is an extra one where someone's just a bit weird. You know what I mean? Like, there's a reason they're weird. It's because they're weird. Don't rent to them. What are you renting to them for? We had a tenant, and she was, she was just sent me a, a series of text messages. She was just really peculiar. And, and like, don't get me wrong, like, I'm quirky as heck as well, right? So I would be classed as weird. I've always been classed as weird, and that's fine. But I know how to fit in if I need to fit in to get a flat. Do you know what I mean? I, I know how to look normal and operate normal. It's not look, by the way. It's, I know how to operate normal, not sound weird. So she sent me a message saying, "Oh look, I've got pens here. I've just washed. I've just washed this red, blue, and black pen in my washing machine." And I'm like, "You're wanting to rent from one of my properties, and you just like think it's really funny that you just rent. Uh, you just washed a red, blue, and black pen in a washing machine of your previous landlord, potentially damaging the equipment." And I'm like, "Piss off! We're not going to rent to you." And, and it wasn't just that. There's a number of things that kind of like ooh, makes you step back and go, hang on a minute. There's something a bit weird there. Now, does that mean that sometimes we evict good tenants? Yeah, of course it does. Absolutely. Not my problem. I don't care. Right. So like that, that might come back and haunt me at some point. I don't care. Why should I? My job is to get paid right, from tenants. Day one, every day, I get paid. A tenant doesn't pay, I get very upset. So we put on our tenancy agreements. If you don't pay, I get very upset. <laughs> and I'm very litigious as well. So you need to make sure that you pay. Anything else that goes on, we can probably deal with, as long as you're not a bit worried about it. But if you don't pay your rent, and then you think it's all right to have an excuse, you're out there. We just don't do it. Tenants are everywhere. There's so many tenants. You never have to worry about not being able to rent a place and I'd rather keep a place empty than rent it to a dickhead, right? So that's the no dickhead rule. And we're getting all excited about tenants this morning. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's talk about clients. Like, how do we know if a client is going to be successful or not? This is really important. Uh, good morning, Aidan. So there's a couple of, uh, and I've got some notes. I made some notes today, which I don't normally do. Normally we just press go and off we go. But I made some notes. So this one is on clients. Sticking to time. When we book a time in for a client and I'm, I'm prepped, ready to meet up at that time, and we go, oh, no, can we move it an hour later? Like, I know, I know stuff happens, and I have to move stuff an hour later sometimes too, okay? And that's fine. So we move it an hour later, and then 20 minutes after, they're still not available. It's like, no, no, we, we just moved it, and it's too late now, so we, I'm, I'm, I cancel the call and we move it. And then they complain that we're moving the call. And it's like, but you're the one who changed it. We had a set thing. I had clients after that. We wouldn't have been able to do the call either. So that's one. If they continually move times, like, yeah, uh, Tuesday at 10 o'clock, brilliant. Oh, actually, uh, can we do Wednesday at 4? Okay. Can we do Thursday at 5? Oh, well, Friday at 2. It's like, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. What's going on? Time management. That's your problem. No, we're going we're gonna to stick to that time. Cancel the other thing because this is more important because you're ruining your life because your time management is so dastardly bad dastardly i've never used that word in a podcast before so it's like recognizing what hang on what's going on here right what why are you constantly re-changing stuff 
I'll give you another one, one that I used to hear with friends. It'd be Saturday night, you'd agree to go out at eight o'clock. At eight o'clock comes, it's, it's coming to pick you up and he's not there. And you're like, just checking right for eight, nothing. Half past eight, uh, where are you? Nothing. Nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, half past 10. Oh, sorry, mate. Yeah, I can't make it now. What? I'm sat here ready to go out. This is when I was younger. I was single, uh, desperate to go out on a night out, meet girls, have a good night with the lads, whatever, right? So, so like, but refuses to actually communicate back with you. So, doof, out, gone, friends, see ya. Known this guy 10 years um, longer. And no, I haven't got time for that. I haven't got patience for that. At some point in your life, you have to step up and go, okay, that is who I am. This is what I expect of you as a friend. If you can't do that, see you later. Does that mean you've got less friends, by the way? Yes. Have you got better quality friends? Yes. And that's what's more important. Why would you be friends with somebody who's going to continually let you, you let you down? I don't, I don't get that. Now, we're talking about clients here, but, but really these principles go into all areas of life. If you're meeting a, a partner, love of your life, and they're constantly letting you down. You, you need to, like, review that. And by the way, there's nothing worse than meeting the love of your life and getting on an aeroplane. And then when the plane lands, the clap when it lands. You're like, oh, what have I done? Terrible mistake. So that's a joke, by the way. So it's not funny if I have to explain it, is it? Um, okay. So then the next one, then, is, like, they've got an excuse for not doing stuff. Like, have you done that thing that you said you were going to do? Oh, well, mm, yeah, uh, about that. Mm, I've been really busy. Okay. I mean, it's a time management issue. Like, on one hand, it's a time management issue. On the other hand, you've got something else going on, something up here going on, which is like a fear of success or a fear of failure. And the fear of failure means that then you fail because you're not doing the thing. But the fear of success is about, you know, you fit into this little box and that's nice and actually – you know, you will no longer fit in that box once you're successful and you don't know what this is going to look like. So then you come back to this little box. We call it boundary conditions. We wrote it on the board yesterday in yesterday's podcast. We're probably going to cover it during the War Room event, which is on the 26th of January. We'll probably cover it at every event because it's one of the more, most important aspects, boundary conditions um, uh, that you can affect in your life, right? So uh, if you are... Uh, continually having excuses not doing stuff. But, but one is it's about the bad time management, and two is it's just not important enough. So you could actually change it around. So you could say, uh, did you did you get me the website login information that I needed so we could update your website? Oh, no, I've not had time. Oh, I get it. You mean it's not a priority for you? No, no, I, 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 that's not what I mean. I just didn't have time. No, you mean it's not a priority. What else did you do? Instead of doing that, oh, well, I watch Netflix. Oh, so Netflix is a priority. Well, yeah, because I was watching Blacklist, right? And it was last season, and I wanted to watch what was happening last season. Got it. Okay, it's fine. That's, that's okay. So what you're saying is that that was more of a priority for giving me the logins for your website so that we could actually update and get you more clients. Oh, do you see the difference there? It's like you've got to delve in. You've got to challenge some of these people. Uh, the other one is getting the information that we need. So it's like, um, uh, it's like, I need, I need to know what sort of images to create for your business. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll get that next week. Well, well, how about you do it now, and then we can, by the time you get to next week, all the images will be created, scheduled, published. They'll all be going out on social media. We'll be driving traffic back to your website. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll do that. A day goes by, another day goes by, another day goes by. We're chasing up. Have you got those, like, an idea as to what, what we need to put on these images? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get it next week. And we're like, we've had this conversation. Do it now. Oh, okay, still nothing. And it's like, these are like little warning signals that, hang on a minute, stop. You've got something going on here. And there's a reason why your business isn't working. It's because actually your time management is terrible or you're just not prioritizing things in the right order. Like, if you don't know how to do that, I, I totally get it, okay, because like 99% of people don't because no one ever teaches it. But actually, if you sorted this problem out, you'd be successful. There are certain things that when we look at really successful people, they do differently to everybody else. They have a time management system. They've got a money management system. I speak to clients. How's your time management? Dreadful. Okay, that's fine. That's why you're here. We can help you. How's your money management system? Oh, it's good. You got a spreadsheet with everything going out and knowing, you know, cash flow forecasting for the end of the month? No. Right. So let's work on that then. There are certain things that, that very successful people do. You don't get Usain Bolt waking up one morning going, oh, today um, I'll run sprints. Yeah. Oh, no, maybe I'll do a marathon. Oh, I don't know. 
Let's bang a bit of Netflix on and watch Blacklist. That'll help. Like, it just doesn't happen. Usain Bolt wakes up and he's got... He, he knows what time he eats, what time he goes to the toilet, what time he showers, what how many calories he's eaten, uh, how, how many cups of coffee is allowed. Everything is scheduled, right? There's a reason why he is so successful. Could it be genetics? Maybe. Maybe. But it's not just genetics. There are people who are very genetically gifted. I've played basketball against them. And they're lazy and don't do anything. They haven't got the success principles down, right? So we know that there's certain things that people can do. Um, now, one of the other major ones is your ability to respond to messages quickly. So if you if you you know if you're dealing with a vendor and a vendor is not responding to you quickly enough, is it a priority for them to sell their house quick? Or actually, like it prob probably is, depending on the circumstance, or is it they've got other stuff going on, like they're being made bankrupt and they can't even physically pick up the phone? Like your job is to work out which one is it and then deal with that client and like confront them on it. Look, I know that you, you're overwhelmed with stuff, but we can help you solve this. Do you want to solve this? Yes. Okay. Call me or let me come around or whatever that happens to be. Um, so let me just see. I think that's everything. So that is everything. Just over 20 minutes. So there are certain things that I see people doing and I see people not doing that will make all the difference. Okay. Like, and I know you can't be perfect all the time and nobody expects perfection all the time. I'm sure as heck not perfect all the time. I'm late. I'm uh, slow in responding to some messages sometimes, but generally overall, 99% of the time, I'm on time. Uh, and, and by the way, I am a late person. I'm somebody who's always late. I'm the person who's got to be there at half 10. I set off at half 10. I've got much better as I've got older. But I recognize that the better I get at that, the more success I will have the better I will get at actually doing the tasks that I've set myself, the better the results will be. The better I am at following up with people and chasing people, the better my results will be. And it's the same for you guys as well. So uh, I think that will do it for today. Some really good information in that one and stuff that you can like look at and go, oh my gosh, he's talking to me here. This is everything that I do. I need to change some of the stuff. You change some of that stuff, your level of success will start to increase. All right, that's it for today. We'll catch up with you on tomorrow's podcast. I hope you have a wicked uh, Thursday, and we'll speak to you soon. My name's Dan Latter. Take care. The Property Coaching and Wealth Creation Podcast, brought to you by property and business coach Daniel Latto. Join the conversation at www.daniellatto.co.uk. Remember to like and subscribe.